Hello. Hello, Alexi. Yeah, can you tell us a few words about yourself and about the tool you want to show us? Yeah, sure. I'm CL. Uh, I'm CEO and co-founder of Infuse AI, the company behind PipeWriter. That's what we are talking about today. So uh, about myself, I've been uh, contributing to open source for more than 20 years now. And I, uh, work, I, I'm mostly uh, in, intrigued by how tools help people collaborate in terms of uh, like open source as well. So I work on uh, one of the early like distributed version control systems before Git. And later on, like, um, like uh, mostly backend technologies such as uh, like uh, if you know PLVA, it's like uh, uh, like uh, the JavaScript within Postgres and all that. And uh, back in 2012, I had a little bit of a paragliding accident, and then <laughs> that's when I rethink my life and then try to see how uh, my software tech like. Um, um, can contribute to the overall society. And then, so I started the civic tech movement called GovZero that's trying to uh, improve transparency through data and then help democracy about participation and uh, like, uh, like deliberation of policies and so on. Yeah, and uh, what about the tool? Yeah, so uh, Typewriter is our new product that's helping uh, uh, data professionals to uh, work with data to make to ensure that data quality works across different tools. So um, a little bit of background about uh, Infuse AI. We started that four years ago, and I'm starting with like a notebook management a tool, and then we have some customers around um, like the financial industry and uh, uh, also manufacturing, and then we're seeing that uh, a lot of the problem actually start with the data. So we're re re working on like how we uh, help more people to collaborate and then with uh, making better, better decision with data. So PipeWriter is our tool that uh, is the open source tool that helps people uh, making assertions, making the comparison between data. So it's like a data, like a tool for controlling data quality or? Yes, you can say that. And so uh, we are okay. mapping a lot of the, uh, like ML, for example, ML ops is a large spectrum, but a lot of things maps back to the data. So how you ingest the data, how you process the training and also monitoring the uh, production, uh, uh, like ML endpoints. So all that is actually a, kind of, you can map that back to a data sets. So uh, like monitoring this data in a, in a sensible way, and then that really helps uh, people to collaborate across the organization. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's see it. Yeah, okay, so let me uh, sh just share my screen here. Can you see it now? Yes. Okay, so yeah, so PipeWriter, as it's just being released, uh, we started off with uh, like letting you to do the data profiling and checks with really good developer economics. So uh, you don't have to configure a lot of things and then uh, you can just start uh, like looking at how your data works, uh, especially if it's in a warehouse. Um, so uh, it's on GitHub. So uh, just come visit and then take a look. So I'm going to quickly just show uh, what you can do with it right now. And then uh, maybe some of the unique features and then what we plan to do afterwards. And also just a COI tour that actually uh, like get, get to the results. So first of all, our favorite uh, taxi data, uh, you can get a uh, overview of how the data distribution looks like. Uh, so this is the sample report where you can uh, see, of course, like the passenger, it, like uh, it should be within six. So uh, this is like the first glance that you can uh, get from the report just by running a command. And then uh, later on, you. When you have a, when you are cleaning the data or making changes, uh, you can see uh, like uh, the difference between the data, and most importantly, like sometimes you have the upstream or uh, have introducing schema change, then uh, you will be highlighted to see here. And then finally, uh, we have a good integration with DBT, so uh, the very popular data transformation tools. So if you're using that already, then there's really no real configuration to that. Okay, so let's dive into it. Uh, so I guess you create these reports, uh, you created from from the tool, right? So you said, okay, give me this data, uh, here's a data set, give me some reports, right? Yes, that's right. 
can you please make the font larger? Yes, I will do that. Yeah. That's good. Good. Okay. So, uh, okay. So here for the demo purpose, I have the uh, the taxi data from uh, I think that's 2021 uh, uh, June and July before it was uh, made available into a bucket only, but it was imported and then. Uh, here's how we start. So we start with uh, pipe writer init, and then uh, it asks you a few questions uh, about what you're trying to do. And then just for a demo, it's SQLite here. And uh, so what we can do here is that we take the June um, report here, and then now you have that configured. And then you just run uh, pipe writer wrong. Uh, I'm gonna just restrict the table to the trips one. And then uh, just in a few seconds, you should get uh, a report uh, showing you that profile as we see uh, here. So that's the really basic thing it does. And then it asks if you want to uh, make some of the, um, the characteristics of the uh, profile that into assertion. So for example, if you want to ensure this type is a certain type or a range of a certain column is within certain range. So it creates that definition for you that uh, is uh, in a YAML file that you can edit. And then later on, you can run that check again with a new data set or when you go along to refine this data. And uh, I guess you prepared these uh, data sets, uh, databases uh, before. So you download the CSV file then mm -hmm. put this to the database, right? Yes, so this yeah. one is just a straight uh, import from the CSV file. Mm -hmm. Okay, what, what is it doing providing? Is it uh, like built in a profile of data looking at some characteristics like mean, max, all these histograms that you showed? It's doing that, right? That's right. So the, the statistic uh, characteristic of that, so like if it's a numerical one, uh, you also have the quantile and then also uh, distribution for the categorical data and so on. So now it's run. Then uh, that you ask, PyPyRider will ask you if you want to generate a recommended uh, assertion for this data source. So if you do that, um, here would be uh, what's being generated. Let's take a look at it in a minute. Um, yeah, so uh, here's what's uh, in this. So you can see the columns are being detected and then uh, you can have uh, like these ones are the recommended ones. So that we want to assert uh, the type. And then for the range, uh, you can have that uh, with a buffer or something that you manually edit it. And if you have a new data set, then uh, uh, that generate assertions will try to amend, not really amend the, uh, the YAML, but just like uh, making a comment onto, into it. So you can see the difference between the, the previous data set, but we'll get there in a minute. So now this is like a really simplistic uh, report that um, it's just showing the basic characteristics of the data. So we have one table and then uh, these are uh, basically just the same as what I showed earlier in the, uh, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the overview. So next I'm gonna show you like uh, when we, uh, update this data and then uh, by, if you just clean it or if the upstream uh, like data source, data engineer is changing something and you have a new data set or in the warehouse, you're running this thing again. So uh, for the demo purpose, I'm gonna just change the pass for uh, the data to be like the July one. And then if I run this again, uh, I will get a new report and then I will be able to uh, compare it. So. So before showing that comparison, the important part that is that sometimes we are uh, seeing the schema change. So uh, for, for this uh, data set I was just using, it wasn't uh, doing that dramatic change, but this was for just fresh import from the CSV, then everything, if you're familiar with SQLite, everything is text by default. So this could be your first version of the data. And then you clean up all the types afterwards, and then that will show up in the comparison. So this is one use case where uh, you can detect um, like, like seemingly innocent change from upstream and then 
uh, you will see that being highlighted for you. And how, how do you actually uh, use this, let's say, in, in real life situations? So first you build the profile of your uh, data set and then uh, like let's say data set from one month and then you do something for the next month and then you you have a batch job and then you run this batch job and you say okay i want to build profile for this uh, for this month and i want to compare it with the profile from the previous month and you do this every month right you compare with the previous month yes we will expect that uh, uh like companies with more aggressive use of data to do this uh in more frequency than a month so like here yeah. but we are just for example Daily. seeing yeah and then so here you can see now the july data uh, actually has some difference in the uh, initial assertions that was suggested and being enforced as suggested by uh, pipe rider so you can see uh the uh the fair max was now there is someone uh taking a trip over a thousand dollars maybe it's just a data problem or an actual Thing that you can now fix that in uh, if you run the pipeline of general assertions again, um, then these will be uh, like uh, hinted for you in this uh, in the existing YAML file as uh, what what's been uh, changed. So yeah, here so you can see that it's marked as to do now. Uh, you're you're now presented with an option to review it and then to. Uh, see if you want to enforce that. So the idea is that all these checks is now version controllable. You can uh, put it and then use it wherever your pipeline is and then uh, making sure that data at every step is uh, matching what you're seeing. So if we see uh, these now, we have two reports. You can now say uh, compare reports. That allows you to choose uh, two things to compare. And then this is where you will see, uh, like, uh, these are the two uh, time that you run it. And then uh, you can see, okay, there's no schema change, good. And then uh, the data distribution, you can see, um, like, for example, here are some pickup location and drop up location changes in these two uh, versions of the data set and so on. So we're improving on this uh, profile, but I think this is really unique uh, for uh, allowing people to see the side by side, like with really like no configuration, just like looking at this data. And do you have really nice uh, command line interface, like uh, very colorful? <laughs> That's yeah, it's nice. just a little bit of uh, developer economics, like making it like intuitive and then uh, just to, for example, choosing uh, things to compare and then actually seeing the, the result. But of course, things can be uh, improved better, but it's open source, so people mm -hmm. can suggest uh, mm -hmm. improvements. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, is there anything else you want to show us in demo? Yeah. So I can I guess... uh, maybe show a little bit more in the uh, report where we incorporate uh, tests. So mm -hmm. these are the ones that uh, we show up in the command line output. Um, hold on. Yeah, the, the part that we show the command line output and then uh, the test, you can now see the, uh, the two versions of the, te the, the, te the report on the taxi data. Uh, that the failure is now uh, highlighted here. Can you show people how, uh, can you show us how to give you a star? Oh yeah, sure. Uh, so it's, uh, if you search for PipeWriter on GitHub, uh, you will be able to see it. And uh, uh, we really love feedback and uh, uh, working with more uh, types of data matrix that, and the checks. Uh, in, in this open source tool. Mm -hmm. why, why the name? Where did it come from? Why pipe data? <laughs> so we were looking at like how uh, the thing data across pipeline would be uh, checked. And then the whole point is that, uh, of course you have the mentality of like a, a data catalog and then oftentimes the data uh, or the metadata on the catalog is outdated. And then, but like in realistic, uh, all the data project actually works across many different tools. 
So now you can, of course, inject test here and there and everywhere. But the, uh, the vision for PipeWriter is that you have a holistic view of, about the data that you use in a certain project. So wherever uh, that comes from a certain ingestion or uh, somewhere along the pipeline, uh, we have a way to uh, collect this report and then see like how you how the actual data consumers when they use the data what are the new constraints or what are the new findings they have and then make that as part of your source uh, controllable assets that becomes the, the like basically like turning the hidden knowledge from uh, across the data organization into something tangible shareable within the organization. So it's data pipeline rider. Yes. Okay. Um, how many people are working on this? So we have uh, the company is about twenty people or so. We have a product in the engineering team about uh, thirteen people working on this. Okay. So we are quite. Uh, I, I'm really amazed. I'm really not amazed, but uh, in. I really like what you do. Like you have so many open source projects. How many open source projects do you actually have? Like six, seven, ten? Uh, uh, you lost count. <laughs> no, no, no. The, the important ones are are uh, I think four. Yeah. So four. I mean, across the whole ML ops uh, ecosystem, I think we were seeing like in different stages of development, seeing the important problem to solve. So. For example, I, 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 I'm like, like I said earlier, I'm from a version control background. So like managing like large files, it's always a problem. So we created a, a small tool called uh, RTVC that's uh, meant to be like a um, artifact uh, version control that's really optimized uh, for managing large data set or model files that without any extra servers. Um, so, uh, so that is our uh, also our, our one of our open source project. And PipeWriter is now uh, one of our focus to uh, create uh, like pipeline wide observability or change management across the um, data slash ML ecosystem. And then of course this Infuse ML or if you Infuse AI the the platform right, that's the yeah. the biggest one right. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, if people want to contribute to PipeRider, how should they go about this? Do you have a contributing guide? I think I see something contributing.md. Yes, this is probably a guide, right? Yes, very important. And then uh, we are uh, we have a Discord channel, and then uh, um, you're all welcome to join and then uh, uh, share problems or features or pain points there. And I'd love, really love to uh, talk to practitioners about like the data problem. Of course, there are so many data tools already, but uh, we're doing this because we see a gap where uh, the data profile and tests are closely related, but usually they are separately uh, managed. So uh, we're seeing this as a very unique way to uh, help helping the team across across different functions, like looking at the data that help diagnose the problem uh, in a, in a, with, with the more context of the data project. So now, uh, well, join us on the Discord and then, um, and then uh, just create issues or uh, report issues and then see uh, how we can make this uh, well, data, uh, uh, what am I <laughs> Sorry, this cut. Yeah, to see how we yeah, make this uh, data ecosystem even better. Mm -hmm. Do you have any advice for anyone who is watching this? Oh, okay. So, uh, I mean, like what we're seeing with data assertions, uh, I think, um, like, I, I would say, like, review your assertion and assumption in your life. <laughs> Just like, uh, it's useful. I mean, we, we all like dive into things so deep and then uh, can, uh, we, we can always learn new things from new lenses and, and then see how we can uh, contribute. And then if you're watching this, you're probably someone in software or data. So, I mean, as the world being run by software and data, you do have profound impact to uh, how the world function. So uh, it's really important to, uh, to see through like uh, others lens and then, then see like how we can actually uh, make a positive impact to the world. 
That's deep. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thanks for the demo. Um, great tool. Thanks for making it open source. I'm sure many people will find it valuable. Um, yeah, and looking forward to seeing more projects from Infuse AI in the future. Thank you. It's really great honor to be here. Thank you, Alexi.